Don't fall, camera. Don't fall, camera. No. No. Huh. Huh. Ah. It's a beautiful morning. Yo, what's up, y'all? My name is Ray Nail Roy. Welcome back to my channel, Fishing Trip. So we back for the vlog, y'all. Check it. Check it. I'm doing something I have not done on this channel in over two years. What's this? What's this? That's right, your boy's back at the beach. <laughs> About to do some surf fishing, man. It's been over two years since I last surf fished. I told myself I was not going surf fishing again until I got a damn drone to drop bait. But you know, my strike is over. It's been two years. I'm back. I'm still old school it. I'm throwing some you know, waders. You know what I'm saying? I got some thigh high boots. Not like hooker boots, but like thigh high boots. I'm gonna cast out there. I got about four rods, okay? So the plan is simple. We're gonna use some shrimp. Right? We use a little shrimp to catch a little bait fish. We cut out the little bait fish to catch a big fish. That's the goal. Today, my goal is to catch my first bull red. Now, I think the bull reds are probably past the second gut, so I'm gonna have to go out there. Never! Never doing that? Nope. Nope. Whatever I can cast out for my thighs and out as far as I'm going. I am not about to die for them damn redfish, okay? But if I can catch a shark, cool, cool. I'll be happy with a shark, or I'll be happy with the world's biggest croaker or whiting. All right, I just don't want to get skunked. That's the goal today. Catch a bull red and don't get skunked. Personally, I think I can do it, y'all. Enjoy the episode, y'all. Let go! We got three PVC pipes to put these into the sand and hold our rod. We have one folding station, small, compact, light. Yeah. Table. This is my backpack of all my gear. Every fishing trip I bring this. This thing is about 60 pounds. Ugh. I do have my cast net that I don't know how to use, so I did bring my bait well. We'll see if we can catch some um, some mullet. Here's my cast net in a trash bag because cast netting is trash. All right, we got a problem. Not only did I forget my waders, I think I forgot my hot thigh boots. One thing I have is these ankle boots. If that's the case, I'm only gonna be able to cast out from shore. Dang. All right, crisis averted. My thigh high hooker boots. They was on the other side of the truck, so we're good. Here's all my surf gear that I need. Oh yeah, quick second. All right, so the leaders I'll be using today was hooked up to me by a subscriber. Um, I believe his name is Darrell Archie Jr. I was out there crabbing at a spot like four weeks ago. He just pulled up on me and recognized me. Told me he owns a company where he makes gear. The leader's called Pier Hookers Fishing Tackle and More, okay? If I can remember, Renell put the link to his Facebook page um, in the description of this video. So you hook me up with some leaders. These are the leaders I'll be using today. These leaders were free, okay? Um, Darrell, if these leaders fail me today, I'm going to have to clown you and your company. So I hope, I hope they produce. I hope they produce. So shout out, man. So thank you for these leaders that I'll be using today. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, my, my rods. 
I'll be using four rods today. I got like a 12 foot surf rod, a 10 foot surf rod, my nine foot jetty rod, and a seven foot heavy duty regular rod. I mean, four damn reels and rods. You trying to tell me I can't catch one bull red? Bro, I'm ready. We're gonna have success today. I don't care if those waves are 10 feet. I just gotta find one distraught bull red within caster distance and catch it for this video. I think I can do it. All right, let's talk about the evolution of me surf fishing. Three years ago, I thought, you know what? The first time I went surf fishing, I'm just gonna come out here with no bait. I came out here with my cast net and some fish bites and thinking, I'm just gonna go out there, cast net some mullet, give me some whiting and some croaker with the fish bites and I'm good to go. Take about five minutes. Two hours later, then cast not one mullet, not one croaker, not one damn whiting. But I learned, I learned from my mistake. Now, when I go surf fishing, there's two things that are a must. If you're trying to catch bait for either mullet, um, cut bait, live bait, check it out, man. Get you a sabiki rig. A sabiki rig is these little bitty, see that little bitty tiny rig, right? So it has about six or eight, ouch, sabiki rigs with some very, very sharp, mother, sharp hook, okay? They get tangled in everything, okay? At the bottom of the Tariki rig, I have like a little two ounce pyramid. Um, what I'm gonna do is, I know if you're from Florida, you can just throw this in your little pretty water, little pretty water by itself, and start catching bait. Bro, I'm in Galveston, Surfside, Texas City, Freeport. We in the hood, baby. We don't got no clear water. With that being said, I'm gonna put little pieces of shrimp on each Tariki rig, right? So if you're going surf fishing, buy you some Tariki rigs, get you at least one pound of dead shrimp, okay? Don't think you're gonna come out here castinating mullet. Don't think you're gonna be coming out here catching stuff just for fish bites, you could. But time is money, baby, all right? Spend $6.50, get you one pound of dead shrimp. These sabiki rigs only cost maybe like $2 a piece. Put some dead pieces of shrimp on the sabiki rig, a little weight, you're gonna toss out into the first gut. You wait, and we're gonna catch on some damn cut bait. Yeah! So let me put on my hooker boots because I don't like to get wet. I'm sorry. I'm not one of these people you about to go see waiting in some damn New Balance shoes, some basketball shorts in this water. No, I'm mad at myself for getting my damn waiters, but it's all good though. I'm not going deep. See this? This is high as we going right here, baby. So what I need to do next, I'm gonna fill up my bait bucket because I know I'm about to catch some whiting, poker sand trout, something to use as bait for my surf rods. Let us pray. Now I believe the time is a little bit past 8 a.m. So um, it's low tide right now. So I gotta kinda watch my truck. I don't wanna get stuck out here because I damn sure don't have four wheel drive. All right, so we got the water for our bait bucket. Let me make sure. Bro, if this thing don't turn on because I forgot my batteries, I'm going to be upset. All right, we good. Get that oxygenated. Perfect. All right, so we have Sabiki rig rigged up. I got water in my bait bucket. I need to chop up some shrimp and catch some bait. Progress. All right, here's my cut bait station. This is going to be my mallet because, you know, I'm going to have to... You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna put them out that misery. I ain't gonna cut them up alive. All right, so we're here some fresh dead shrimp, fresh. And we're just gonna cut little nuggets like this, right? The Shibiki rig hooks are really small. So I just want them in each knuckle, as so. Like that, like that, tail for the birds. All right, so what you're gonna do, 
as you can see, they have this little feather thing on here. All right, just put your shrimp in there through the shell. Boom, that's it. And we're gonna repeat this about six or seven times. I'm not sure how many are on here, like that. Yeah, only bad thing about the sabiki, it's only like a one-time use, man. I've tried many times to try to store these after I'm done with them for the day, but you really can't. So you just use them at one time, and pretty much it. Right there, see that? I only got one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so we got six. And honestly, even though it's super shallow, right, the first... The first gut, it might be one to two feet. There's fish sitting in those guts. But the fish we need are in that first gut. I'll show you what I'm talking about. If there's no fish in the first gut, it's about to be a long video. If I can't catch any cut bait, matter of fact, I don't think there's gonna be any video, okay? So there we go. All right, so I have my Sibiki rigs, right? Let's go toss this in the first gut in the surf and get us some damn cut bait. I'm trying to fill it. There we go. No, there we go. Now keep reeling. I think it's still there. Keep reeling. I think it's still there. Don't be a hard head, baby. Oh yeah, we definitely got some. Don't be a hard head. Don't be a hard head. Don't be a hard head. Yeah. Look like we got us a crocodile, baby. Perfect. Perfect. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. All right, y'all. Finally did it. This is exactly what I was looking for. All right. Got a nice size. This is a whiting or a croaker? Whiting. Definitely a whiting. Nope, I don't hear nothing. Definitely a whiting. Um, gonna be good cut bait I'll put this one in the bucket I need about a few more we can start surf fishing I'm about to stop put the shabiki rig on a PVC pipe come on bite it bite it I think we might got one oh, did it let go did it let go Got it. Yes. Another whiting. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Got it. All right, y'all. So we got our second whiting of the day. Perfect size. Progress, man. That's two. All right, so I think I'm good. All right, so I have my surf rod set up with the leader. Um, next, we gotta just put our stakeout pole, call it stakeout pole, um, instead of sand. Um, I gotta dispatch my bait, that's gonna be a scene. And yeah, we're good to go. I'm just gonna put out two. Um, we'll say right here, right by the water line. <clears throat> be nice to find some sand fleas. I got some sand flea. Um, fish bites i don't know if there's sand fleas here on this part of the coast in the galveston surf tide area there we go yeah okay it's filling right up i need to go to some line the line right here don't want to lose mother come on get, get in there mine mine get down Come on. yeah. There we go. Yeah, simple. Uh, all right, all right. All right, y'all, so once again, here's one of my whitings I'm gonna use for, I could throw it on it live, but I wanna use this cut bait. Sorry, buddy, I know, I know. These are actually delicious if you catch a nice size one. Now, you know, I'm no humanitarian, you know what I'm saying? But I kind of figure, you know, if I was caught, you know what I'm saying? Like, imagine I'm just walking down the street and I'm like, damn, there goes the double cheeseburger, that look good. I grab it, and they say no, I'm getting hooked, throwing this to somebody's bucket, 
And next thing you know, I'm getting pulled out by some giant that's about to cut my head off. Personally, yeah, I know a lot of people just cut the head off. Me, I use my Thor Matic, okay? Knock me out before you cut my head off. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In the arms of an angel. <laughs> The big star to fly. Mm. Okay, he's out. All right, y'all. So we have our fish, okay? So here we have our fish head dispatched properly, okay? Here is the leader that I got from the subscriber, Darrell. It has a huge swivel, some nice thick line. Got these little pretty beads. I added a eight ounce spider weight to it. The leader then goes down to this very large circle hook. I ain't gonna lie, I never caught anything with a hook this big before. But you know what? I don't be trying to catch for big fish, so big hook and these big fish. Bro, are you okay? That's just me. So I'm gonna go underneath through the head and come back up. Remember, he's already dead, y'all. He's already dead. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Hold on. There we go. That's it. Feels thick for some reason. Am I in my line? Oh damn it, I caught my line. For sure caught my line. It's all good. Idiot. There we go. Crisis averted. And I got water over my boots. Oh, we're getting hit. We just got hit. Uh, no. Definitely got hit. Was that a bird? Or was that my lure? We get hit, baby. We on. We on, baby. Hold on. Put the rod up, baby. Just got hit. Hold on. Definitely got hit. Gotta hit a drag. Take this damn bell off. Here we go. Please be on. Please be on. Come on. Oh. Come on. I don't feel it. Wait. Is it there? Hold on. Oh no. Oh, we on, baby! Woo, baby! Let's go! Woo! Come on! Ah! Uh, let's go! What is that? Come on, baby! Come on! Come on! Let's go! Let's go! It's right there on the surface. Look like it's a red. That's a red, buddy. That's a red, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We did it. Oh my God. We did it, buddy. Look at that. Come here. Come here. Let's go. <laughs> Oh my God, look at this. It might be a slot. It might be a slot. Bro, that hook set is amazing, man. Girl, your lead is a 
Amazing. Let's go. Then we got a slot. Ooh, we got a slot. 27 inches. 27 inches. Wow. Wow. On a mullet head. That's up there. Not a mullet head, a widened head. 27 inches, y'all. Slot. Unbelievable, baby. Unbelievable. This leader killed it. Absolute killed it. Yeah, man. Daryl, your leaders are legit, bro. Wow. 27 inches, y'all. This is the biggest red I've ever caught in the surf. Unreal. <laughs> y'all, I'm out there tossing my spoon. Get caught up on my second rod, get stuck. I'm looking back just by chance because I'm stuck with my spoon and my second rod. I turn around and I see boop, boop, run back from the surf, put up my other rod, had to get the camera because if it don't happen on camera, it doesn't count. Sure enough, I set the hook and I didn't feel anything. I thought it was gone. I kept running and bam, tension. We did it. Un freaking wheel. It's not a bull, but it's a slot, which is even better. That means I get to go home and cook it. Wow. You set a goal for yourself, even though that goal might be hard. I said it was a 1% chance of this happening today. Guess what? Today, I'm a 1%er. Let's go! All right. Viewer discretion is advised. Once again, this is my 27 inch slot red we're going to take it home and eat it with that being said i want to bleed it now in order to bleed your fish it's pretty simple man we're going to do a cut within the gills and come out bam just like that have my home depot bucket with some salt water we'll put it upside down and it's going to be actual a literal blood bath i'm sorry but to kind of show you how it's done for educational purposes like this all right unlike the whiting that i use for cut bait where i cut the head off i knocked it in the head this one by cutting the actual gills i wanted to actually have that heart bleeding to pump out that blood for me okay so once again you have the gill place here right once you go in you're gonna go in and come back out quickly okay so i'll come in right here we're going to go in and out from there put it upside down in the water <clears throat> sorry buddy sorry buddy sorry buddy there we go and go down other end just kind of cut across there we go gills are cut and i'm through okay next put your fish upside down in the bucket and just let it bleed out i know it's graphic man but where do you think the fish that you eat at mcdonald's comes from at some point somebody has to dispatch it look at that tail man Look how beautiful that is. It's a beautiful fish, but it won't die in vain. It's going to feed me and my family tonight. If I don't catch anything else, then this was all worth it. This is all worth it. I started at about 8.20. It's now 10.20. So a two-hour process of catching the bait. After I caught the bait that I need for cut bait, set up my rods. Had them soaking for about an hour until we got hit. The timing of everything is amazing because if I wasn't out there casting on my spoon, if I didn't get my line stuck on my spoon, I wouldn't have turned around to see my other line getting hit. Amazing. All right, y'all. If I don't catch anything else, I'll see you back at the kitchen. If I do, then I'll see you on the next clip because we're not done yet. I still have another whiting. Cut it up. I'm gonna put my surf rod back out, see if we can get another one. Yeah. Y'all, we just got hit. We just got hit. We just got hit. Relax, Renell. 
Here we go. Tighten up drag. Tighten up drag. Relax. Okay, get this damn bell out the way. Get the bell, get the bell. Here we go. Set hook, set hook. Set hook. Get, get some. Get some. Get some. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Yeah. This is a big one, y'all. This is a big one. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ah. Oh. Come on. Todd's coming in. Don't fall, camera. Don't fall, camera. No. No. Come on. Don't fall. Do we land it? We can't lose it. We can't lose our damn bed, bro. Put his damn fish. It's still on. We're good, y'all. We're good. Uh, come on. Whoa. It's big. It's big. Come on. Okay. It's starting to work its way towards one of the rocks. No. No. Come on. Yeah. No. Where you going? Where you going, baby? Where you going, baby? I see it. I think it's gonna be a red fish. Could this be my first bull run? Come on. Come on, baby. It's heavy. This might be my first bull run. That looks like a red. This might be my first boy ray, y'all. This might be my first boy ray. No. What's the one? This is my first boy ray. Come on. Get it. Come here. Come here. This is it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Holy crap. I think I just caught my first bull raid. I've been fishing all my life. Never caught one. I'm 42 years old. Turn 43 November 21st. First time on this channel. Let's get a fish a measurement on it. All right, y'all. Let's get a measurement on them. Here we go. 30, 33 inches. Got mud on my damn glasses. 30, 30 inch bull red. Wow. PB, the first time I ever caught something this damn big. Amazing. 33 inch bull red. Thank you, God. Bro, once again, y'all, set a goal out for yourself and make it happen. Let's get her back in the water. Keep her pushing. Let's go! All right, y'all, so I'm back at home, back in my kitchen. I hope you enjoyed the first segment of the episode, the catch. Welcome to the second segment, the clean and cook. Epic day, epic day in the water today, man. Before I get started with this, man, shout out to my subscriber, Darrell Arshi Jr., right? Hope I'm saying your name right. He's the one that gifted the channel. He didn't pay for it. This is not a sponsored video. He gifted the channel the leaders that I use today, right? Once again, I was crabbing like a month ago. He recognized me, said, hey bro, I'm subscribed to your channel, love the channel. I have my own company. It's called Peer Hookers Fishing and Tackle and more. And I'm, I got some product, would love for you to test it out. You don't gotta put it on video, you don't gotta give me a shout out. Just love for you to have some product. So I took it in, really appreciate that man and utilize it today, man. His leaders are the truth, all right? I will put his information in the description below. If you wanna purchase some of these, cause I know I am. And yeah, man, killed it. PB, man, my first, PB Red, man. I'm 43 years old, and today I caught my first 
PB Bull Red. Bull Red, y'all. So look, man, I've been up since 4 a.m. this morning. It's like 4 p.m. right now. So I'm keeping it simple, right? I'm trying to do a clean and cook, but I'm just gonna do my, one of my favorite things, a fish sandwich, a fried fish sandwich. Super simple, super quick. I'm trying to eat and take a nap because I still gotta edit this video and try to get it to y'all by tonight, whatever. So check out the ingredients we'll be using. Real simple, I think you'll like it. All right, y'all, first thing first, I have my deep fryer. It's already set for 375 degrees. We need a little Louisiana tartar sauce, Louisiana tartar sauce, some lettuce. We got some Sara Lee sweet Hawaiian buns, very important. One nice tomato, your seasoning, using slap your mama. Couple of lemons, we need a couple of eggs. The Xanarays, fish fry, a little panko breadcrumb. I'm gonna do a little Idaho cut fries. You know, I'm keeping it quick and simple. That's all we need to make a dope fish sandwich. I think I can do it. All right, y'all, first thing first, my favorite part of the clean, cleaning fish. I, I, I'm lying. I hate cleaning fish. I hate cleaning fish, damn it, because it's a lot of work. We'll sharpen up our utensils here. All right, it's a little Smith sharpener. I do coarse, fine. Shout out to all my headphone listeners cringing right now. All right. I'm using a combination of two filet knives. We're gonna be using the ugly stick filet and my fisherman electric to get the head off because Red's got some big hard heads, okay? Let's get that popping. So first thing first, let's get the start of the show. Here he goes. Perfect, man. 27 inch slot and little rigamortis, but that's okay though. All right, so what we're gonna do first is take the head off. And I always do this, I'm like which way do I go with the head? I did bleed it, right? So if I did bleed it, hopefully we got a nice, fresh, clean fish. So we're gonna go right here on the head, I go towards the head, right? There we go. Yo, even with the electric knife, even with the electric knife, this thing is hard to take. There we go. There we go. We do the head, get through that bone. All right, perfect. Got that first slit through the head. Makes it a lot simpler to go through instead of with my flay knife. Now what I'll do next is simply go along the top and start working my way towards the stomach. Simple as that, right? All right, let's get this away. All right, so next we're gonna just go along the edge, right? The top with the very tip of your fillet knife. And just work your way along the tail. Yeah. So yeah, this was the first time, like I said, y'all, I've been surf fishing in over two years. I think I looked on my channel. It's been about two and a half years since I posted my last surf fishing video. And what's ironic is the reason I stopped going surf fishing, I was convinced that I just needed a drone to be able to fly up bait to drop it two, 300 yards to get to the big fish. Ironically, no drone today, right? Y'all saw me. I forgot my damn waders, so I had my little hooker boots. I was able to walk out to like knee deep water and I was able to cast, right? I caught both of those fish on top of the first gut, right? I caught a 33 inch bull red at the first gut. So my theory of thinking I have to go out super far to catch big reds, has changed today. Apparently you don't. News to me, baby. News to me. All right, man. So I'm excited, man. It's definitely gonna get me to go out there more, knowing that I can just cast from shore and catch big fish with the proper bait. All right, so we got that first slit all the way down to the tail. I'm gonna go all the way through because I'm gonna flip it to try to keep some tail up. All right, at this point, here we go right there, right? We're going to start 
working our way along the spine right above the spine love the sound love the sound so above the rib cage is the very tip of my fillet knife so far so good now that bull red you know although i never use tags of course i'm not going to keep a bull you know let it breed get the bigger ones for later all right oh yeah i'm starting to do what i normally do is kill my fillet it's all right though like i say every video although i'm not a great filleter you know just working my way along the spine i guarantee you my money shot of the food is gonna be amazing. <laughs> gonna be amazing. Keep that nice and clean. No pooping on TV, please, sir. There we go. I wonder if I can do this totally with my fillet knife. You know what I'm saying? So I try the other side, this with the fillet knife. I doubt I can lose any more meat than I'm losing now. There we go. Oh man, that's a lot. Yeah, I lost, I lost a lot of meat there. It's all good though. I can make some fish head stew. I wish I can use this for my crab traps, but apparently you can't use game fish for bait. That's what they said. Somebody told me that. All right, so next we're gonna go down and Slowly work our way under the skin. Don't see no worms. My meat is nice and white because I did bleed it. I know that, you know, bleeding scene was a little graphic, but I always kind of wonder like, how do you bleed fish? Then I seen MDLR Fishing do it. I said a little slower. MDLR Fishing do it in one of his videos and I tried it. And after I tried it, I realized it really does make a difference on the meat. Absolutely makes a difference on the meat. All right, as so you can see here, look at that, look at that white. Slight bloodline there, but no, no biggie. All right, let's put that back here. Need to get the rib cage out. All right, hold on. Apparently my clothes are dry now. All right, so next, where's that rib cage at? There we go. I'm gonna lose some more meat. That's one thing about redfish is that you don't yield a lot of meat, you know, that big hunker. This is a, the 27 inch red, but it'll make just enough to make a sandwich. That's all we need, enough to make a sandwich. No bones good perfect let's put that to the side on my plate and i just want to go back real quick see how much meat i lost you see that look at that i could have got a little bit closer to the skin do a little experiment right here hold on y'all i'm trying to be quick about it y'all see like right here is that rib or that meat hold on Okay, that's rib. Oh no, that's meat, damn it. Well, it's not a lot of meat. All right, we'll try to do the other side a little bit better. We'll just put that back here. And y'all, oh my God, I just remembered. I just remembered that I told myself the next time I catch a red, I wanna try to eat, what do they call it? Throat, red throat. So like, y'all see right, like right here, like right here. Apparently, you can eat this. I've been seeing it from Florida guys doing it, um, some local guys doing it. So yeah, we're gonna try to cut up and try red throat. Pause. All right, y'all, so next we gotta just batter our fillets to get them ready. Have my assembly line here. All you need, once again, is eggs. We have our Xanaran fist fry, fist fry, fist fry breadcrumb. And we have our panko 
bread come to give that extra crunch, all right? So like I say, just get a couple of eggs, mix them up a little bit. I tried this last time with buttermilk. I thought I was gonna get like a, a thicker crust or a thicker batter, but I don't really notice any difference. So we're just going back to the basics. Um, now this is Anorans. I haven't tried the one that's seasoned before. Mm, I'm gonna put a little bit more seasoning, you know. My black people, we love seasoning, hold on. So let me get my, uh, slap your mama. You know what I'm saying, we're gonna put this X, a little something, something extra in there, you know what I'm saying? I can't see the seasoning. We've got our fillets here, We've got our throat. There we go. I wanna taste my fish, you know what I'm saying? I wanna taste it. When I say taste it, I wanna taste seasoning. All right, there we go. Got that. Let's mix this dry ingredient there. All right, just a little bit more pizzazz on it. All right, so the assembly line. Take your fillet, dip it in your egg. All right, dip it in your egg, place it in your bread flour mixture. You can just use regular flour, honestly, as well. All right, get your excess off. Put in your panko, just kind of press down. Like that, flip it, press down. And shake the excess off, boom, and that's it. Oh yeah, that got seasoned because I'm about to sneeze. All right. Once again, to fry fish, egg, flour mixture, like that. And if you want to just fry it at this point, you can, but I like panko. Like I said, it gives that extra crispy, crispiness to your fish. I'm curious to see um, this whole redfish throat. I hope I like it. I hope I like it and I hope I can remember every time I catch a redfish, cut the throat out. Now, honestly, since it was the first time I did it, if I do it again, it's pretty much right under the fins, cut, cut, just like, honestly, with an electric fillet knife, that's perfect for red throats. So we'll see. Another thing with redfish I'm noticing as well, they have a huge head. There's a lot of meat in that head. I don't know if reds have enough meat, like cheek meat, I don't think they do, but like their forehead got meat in it. I'm gonna look up a recipe for like, you know, like a fish head soup because that's a lot of meat, man. I don't like wasting meat. That fish died for me today, so I wanna make sure I do what I can to appreciate it. So here's my throat. I kind of like slice it here, kind of open it up a little bit. So we're gonna get that right there. Get that flour there. I'm not gonna eat the skin, of course, because it still has scales on it. There, there, there. Get my panko there. <sighs> bed and just like that y'all our fillets are ready to go into the deep fryer i'm going to fry these for approximately mm, three minutes that deep fryer cooks everything super quick love it i think i got an hgb um yeah because you know when you put it in the pan you gotta flip it you gotta worry about burning down your house deep fryer no set it and forget it three minutes is gonna be done so let's put our fillets in here um one thing else we gotta do is just butter our buns you know what I'm saying? But our buns, pause. Um, and from there, we just gotta get the money shot. So yeah, I'm gonna fry these three minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the money shot because this video is already long enough. See y'all a little bit. You. Yeah.
All right, y'all, so it's time for my favorite segment, the taste test. Yep. Let's see if this 12 hours of um, fishing and filming is worth it. It looks delish, right? First things first, let's try this breadfish throat. Ooh, meat's all flaky. Okay. Redfish throat. I've never had redfish throat before. Mmm. Bro. You know something good when you take a bite and you gotta look at the food like. Wow. Redfish throat is like flaky. It's tender. It's like the filet mignon of the redfish. Look at that. Oh, wow. I ain't caught a lot of redfish in my life, but I'm upset at the fact that I didn't keep the throats. I've been throwing throats away. Listen, if you're catching slot reds, keep the throats. The throats are delicious. Wow. Wow. All right, all right, I'm sorry, let me focus. Next, let's try the sandwich. I know the sandwich is bomb. I had sandwich before. See that? Look at that. Look at that. Hold on, sandwich. Mmm. Mmm. Yup. Mm-hmm. Mm. Fishing is hard. But when you have days like this, it's totally worth it, man. The food is delicious, man. I'm about to throw down, y'all. Thanks for sticking around, man. If you're still watching this video, you're a real one. I know some people clicked off the video after I caught my fish and y'all didn't want to see me cook, but I don't care about them people. I care about y'all. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, let me go and shut this down, man. Once again, my name is Ray Nell Roy, AKA Fish and Trips. And it's been real, y'all. I'm about to grow up. Peace. I feel like an R&B singer.